Thank you for joining me everyone. I just want to recap on a popular subject at the moment and that's dowsing. Some of you believe it, some of you don't. All I'm asking is you keep an open mind throughout this video and sure, make your judgments afterwards, but I personally believe that dowsing can be an asset to your metal detector. These are tools in your arsenal, these work together. Before we start, I'd just like to point out that I'm not a professional dowser. I just dabble in it, that's all it is. There's loads of people who've got far more knowledge than me. So this video is really just my take and it's really a beginner's guide into dowsing and this is how I learn. Later on in the video, I'm gonna give you a top tip on how to turn your metal detector into a dowsing piece of kit. So stay tuned for that one. So right, let's get started. There's lots of different dowsing tools on the market and they are simply just tools. Um, I use aluminium rods which are 20 inches long, the corner six inches and the width is five millimeter. You can use wood, a pendulum, whatever you're comfortable with but I've had these dowsing rods for years and I'm comfortable working with them. Some people like to use the rods with the inserts and there's no tension on them at all. I like to use just bare rods because I can put some tension on them and this is very useful if you're dousing and it's windy because you can actually stop the wind from blowing the rods around. Um, I've had occasions where the wind's been blowing this way and the rods have turned that way. So they're very, very powerful once you get an association with them. So what do you need to start dousing? Well, apart from the tools, you need to condition yourself. You need to get yourself in what we call an alpha state. It's a calm state of mind where you're just totally relaxed and concentrating on just the one thing, the target in mind. If you're out dousing with a group of friends and you're all mucking around, it's probably not gonna work. So if you wanna try dousing for the first time, I suggest you do it on your own in a quiet area. Have I had success dousing? Yeah, I have. I've had some great success dousing, but if I tell you about the success, it makes this video about me and not the science. So if you're just starting off dowsing, it may pay you to look at dowsing in two different ways. One of these will probably work best for you. You can look at it as a bit of fun or an exact science. It doesn't matter as long as you can get a response from the rods, pendulum, whatever you're using at the time. But it's essential when you start off dowsing to get an association with the tools you're working with. For example, an association with these rods. And to form an association, you need to ask the rods some questions. It's almost like getting permission to use them. First of all, start off by asking, what way would you go for the answer yes? And if the rods start to cross, they may even open up. Some people have an opposite yes to a no. If they start moving, that's a really good sign because that means you can progress now to the next level. Ask the rods, which way would you go for the answer? No, make a note of the response and you're well on your way to your first dowsing session. Once you've formed the association, you need to keep the questions really, really simple. Can I douse today? Yes or no? If it says no, don't push it. Just leave it to another day. You will eventually get the yes answer. You can douse today. Your next question might well be, can you show me the direction of the nearest big metal deposit? And the rods may turn. You can do it with just one rod and it will turn. Don't try to influence the rods. That's absolutely pointless. The only times I influence the rods are when I try and get them to reopen. Very often they do it by themselves. I just say the words open and they open. But if they don't, you can then influence them to open, but never influence them to cross. So if it takes you to what it thinks is the nearest metal deposit, the rods will cross as you walk over it. Carry on walking and there's a good chance the rods will open. Step back and they're cross. So now you've got a rough idea where the metal deposit is. You can use your metal detector now to locate it exactly, or you can go further with a few more questions. Is this metal deposit more than six foot deep? Yes or no? Obviously, if the answer is yes, you're not gonna be using the metal detector. 
If it's no or no movement at all, start off with a lower number, six inches, 12 inches. When they cross, boom. But one important question you must ask is, is the metal deposit still here? Because I've had an instance in the past where I was convinced there was a metal deposit and I've spoken to the farmer and he said, there was, but we've dug it all out many, many years ago. There was a trailer buried or something like that. So you need to ask the question, is it still there? Because the rods may still be picking up the energy from the ground. So what makes a good dowser? You need to be focused. You need to believe really what's going on. If you're just doing it on a light-hearted way, you might not have great success than someone who is more dedicated. And this is why children make really good dowsers because they've got an open mind. They're believers from the word go. So what exactly is dowsing? Dowsing's just a simple tool that amplifies a reaction. So many of us have got the ability to douse. Most of us have got the ability to douse, but it's just how you apply it, how you pick up on these senses. I've got a really old video on dousing. It's quite a few years old now. If you want to look at it, I'll post the links below. If you want to talk about metal detecting or dousing, why not drop over to the Gary's Metal Detecting Forum? It's been going for years. There are a great bunch of blokes over there, really friendly, and it's a nice alternative to Facebook. I'll post the links below. With all that said and done, I guess it's time for a little experiment. How about I put some tokens in front of me on the table and just simply ask the rods how many there are? How many coins are on the table in front of me? More than 20? Yes. More than 30? Yes. More than 40? Yes. More than 50? No. 41? <laughs> yeah, 41. 42? 43? 44? 41? 41. Let's have a count up, see how many we've got. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. That's thirty. Two, four, six, Eight, ten, forty, one out. I'm happy with that. Well, that was impressive. You got to admit that was close. Right now, my top tip: how to turn your detector into a dowser. Take this scenario: you're about to go detecting. You've had a massive row with your wife or your kids, or someone's phoned you up and put you in a bad mood. You turn up at the field and your fines rate goes down because you're not in the right frame of mind to go detecting because there's so much going on in your mind, it's pointless. Whereas you go out detecting in what we call the alpha state, do you remember we've just talked about? A clear state of mind, calm. Your fines rate will most likely go up. So next time you go out detecting, just try and find this alpha state and why not take some dousing rods along with you? It'll be a bit of fun, but until then, let us know what you think. If you like this video, perhaps we'll go out in the field and do some experiments on some genuine targets. That'll be interesting. But until then, thanks for watching the Metal Detector Skill School, and I'll see you all very, very soon.